and welcome to lindaspapercraft.co.uk. I'm Linda, I'm a stamping up demonstrator and um, today I'm just demonstrating how we can make this lovely cute little box loosely based on one Sam Hammond did quite a few years ago now with a flat top and slightly pinched in size. I've changed the measurements um, and also changed the closure because I've actually used a velcro dot to close it and so I'm going to make today's with some cherry cobbler and I'm going to use the painted Christmas DSP which is actually a returning favourite from last year um, so which I love so much was included in last year's Christmas kit so you may well have some left over because you got loads um, so we know how we all hold this stuff right so I'm going to do this all on my trimmer so I'm going to get the trimmer out now so I'm using the stamping up trimmer because well a because I'm a stamping up demonstrator b because it's a really nice trimmer and um, we've got a score blade and we've got a cutting blade so we can do everything on here um, excuse the glare from the lights if you're getting it so so we're going to start with the cutting and I'm going to cut out from this piece of cherry cobbler uh, the base basically so it is just let me check we're in maybe go up a little bit so this is 26 and a half centimeters wide this piece there we go by 19 centimetres tall. I suppose that's wide and that's tall, isn't it? 26 and a half by 19. There's only one way you can cut this out of a piece of A4. Um, so, okay. And then what you're going to need, because this box is going to be eight and a half centimetres wide, I need the designer series paper to be eight centimetres wide. And then each piece, as you can see, they're all need to be the same size so a quick tip is to cut a strip at eight centimeters like so and then you need so I'm using the this side now with the shorter because I'm making smaller pieces so I need a three centimeter piece for the front of the flap a two centimeter piece for the top of the lid and then two nine and a half centimeter pieces, one for the front and one for the back. Okay, so they're all eight centimeters wide, two at nine and a half, and then one at two, one at three. So nice and easy. So they're all ready to go. I'll pop all the trimmings off to one side to be sorted. All my tiny weeny trimmings go to nursery. Um, the, the local kindergarten, they love it because they can just let the kids loose with some really quite nice cardstock and let them do what they want. So, right, so we're now going to start scoring. So I'm going to put the cutting blade away. And the first score is actually quite close to the edge. It's one and a half centimetres. So I'm just going to use my piece of post-it tape just to fix that in place at the one and a half centimetre and score that because I want to make sure it's straight and it can be a bit wobbly when you're not got much support so pop that back on the desk so the next one so that's one and a half and then 10 centimeters all the way 14 centimeters and then 22 and a half centimeters to do the other front so if we just go so we're doing top to bottom at one and a half, 10, 14, and 22.5. Now to get the sort of pinch in at the side here, to help that, I've got a partial score line there. So, and that's going to be in the middle of the two sides. So you need to start at 12 centimeters. So that's halfway between these two score lines. And so it's 12 centimetres this way and I want to go 12 and a half centimetres that way, which is five inches if you don't have the metric um, cutting guide on. So if you've bought your cutting, your trimmer from me, you will have this metric cutting guard somewhere because I always get you one because I find it easier when you're using it with me in class. So that's at 12 centimetres to five inches or 12 and a half centimetres. Then we're going to go to 24 centimetres. 24 and a half centimetres and do that again 
So again, moving it to the 12 and a half centimeter and we're going, there we go. I think I've slightly shot over to the 20, uh, to the 13 centimeters, but that's fine. So now you're going to take this and you are going to turn it 90 degrees clockwise and start again with your scoring. So your first score line this time is three centimetres. I'm thinking I might use my post-it tape as well here because there's not a huge amount resting on there. And again, score blade, don't forget score blade. So that's three. And there it is, 30. I couldn't see it on my instructions. Sorry. <laughs> 13 centimetres, I can work it out because I know it's 10 centimetres away. So that's 13 centimetres and then 15 and a half. So that's 3, 13, 15 and a half. And we are all done. We can pop this away. Right, okay, so now we're going to do some folding and burnishing so I'm just going to fold and burnish all my folds here. I'm not doing the partial ones largely because they're quite hard to do anyway and um, because you don't want to burnish all the way down and we can do that once we've made up the box and also we're going to be putting off quite a bit of it. <laughs> go so that's our fourth there's our four sides okay so here's your glue this is the done that. this is where the glue is going to go so this is the lid of your box so the first thing we need to do is get rid of all of that and then these bits here and this little triangle little rectangle there okay so you need your lid next to your glue because that's going to you want that join to be at the back so lid this all this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten rectangles there two rectangles one rectangle there okay i'm going to get some scissors and i'm just going to cut along here if you want to do this on your trimmer you can if you position it so you're at six centimeters might be better to do it that way actually yeah 13 centimeters and you're just cutting up to that score line there i'm just going to do it with some scissors and that's right up to the lid. I do suggest you use it with a decent pair of, you know, a larger pair of scissors than the snips. You can do them with the snips if you're good with the snips. I just find the bigger ones easier. Stamping up, we used to do some lovely, apparently, I never got them because it was before my time, a pair of craft scissors, which I'm, every time I see a new catalogue, I'm hoping you get one. Let's just trim that a bit further so we've got it definitely. There we go. Hanging by a thread. There we are. And then I'm just going to cut off this little piece here at this end. So cutting along the score line. Just there. I have to confess it's about my fourth attempt to make this video. So I'm just going to check. We are filming. Right. Just had this sudden thing that, oh God, I've not put the camera on. Okay. Oh that off a bit too soon and then I'm chamfering in the sides of this tab and then we're going to cut along all the four bottom um, score lines up to that first score line there but I'm just going to take the edges off so I'm just cutting out little wedges so that when you put it together you won't see the edges of the sides so it just makes it look a little bit prettier so so just little triangles alongside those score lines, just so that we're not seeing any edges sticking out. Okay, and then at this stage is when I'm actually going to decorate the box. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of all of 
those. Okay, so this is your outside of your box. I did make a hash of that, didn't I? I'm going to use my snips to go in and neaten that up. There we go, that's better. Right, so we're going to need designer series paper on the lid and then on the two larger panels because they're the front and the back. So I've got one to go there, one to go there. So we'll do these two first. I don't think it really matters with this one because it's got things growing up and down. There we go. And then when the lid's going to be closed, it's going to be down here. So I'm just doing it this way so I get it the right way up. Although, as I'm saying, I don't think it really matters with this, but I am going to do that one that way. So I'm sticking these bits onto the lid. So just evenly between the score lines and then this one just on the top there. I just got a very small itch there right okay so and then we're going to build our box so I mean if you want to decorate the sides as well you could do although obviously we've got these so before I actually build it I am just going to tease that score line in a little bit because it is easier to do it now so I've just got my finger behind I'm just folding that down there so we're getting a little bit of a fold there and I'm going to fold this side in put glue on the tab you can glue, use tear and tape or glue I wouldn't use snail uh, because it's not quite as strong as glue or tear and tape um, and if you want the box to last which I'm sure you do and um, the advantage of glue of course is the wiggle room so I'm just going to line that up with the edge there with my score lines there we go now of course if you want to make a load but don't want to have to store them built then just leave them like this okay and then you can finish them off when you come to need them so and I am just going to so now you want your front flap to be the last one down so I am folding these. Didn't chamfer that edge, did I? Don't forget to chamfer the last one because it's harder to do in situ. <laughs> Excuse me, coddling it together there. Right, so you want your two side, your, I've got the front at my front and I haven't got my glue ready. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there and close that down and then I'm going to put some glue on here just on this edge and on that edge there and I'm going to glue the front down I want the box to be nice and straight so you want to position your box so it's nice and straight Okay, and then I'm going to go in. I used to do it with a bone fold, but I found it's actually better now. If you get a pencil with a rubber on the end, just put that into place. Okay, that's all glued nicely down. And then we're just going to squeeze that in, which is already ready. And that is then going to fold over the front like that. So we just need to add our little 
a Velcro dot, which obviously, tiny weeny Velcro dot, has disappeared off the base of the earth. Let's get some more. So these are the ones I use. And they are Velcro thin clear fasteners. And these are 3 eighths of an inch or 0 0.9 of a centimetre big. And I should have, I did have a few left, but this inch is gone. They are quite hard to keep track of. <laughs> so, just going to get those out. And they come in a pack. So you've got clear ones and then fluffy ones. Okay, and your clear ones are going to go on this side and your fluffy ones on the other side. And what I tend to do when I get them is, when I open a new pack, is I stick them all together. There we go. Okay, and then all you need to do is cut one off. So I'm just going to go down there, into there. And I like these because they are the low profile ones. They're very thin. So I can't remember, but there's the clear one. So you want to put the whiter one on your lid because that's the one that's not going to show as much. Okay, so you put your whiter one. That is not in the middle. It'll do. <laughs> Near the middle. Okay, and stick that down and then pull off your backing and just close your lid so get everything into position with your sides and then just close it down carefully open it and that's left the clear one you can see i mean you can see it but it's not super obvious is it it's in see-through so you just make sure that one's nice and down and there you go one finished box so and I've just added little sentiments of mine just for you and a nice little brush brush butterfly. So I hope you get to make some of these boxes. They are quite, they're beautiful and they're really nice to give. Um, so, or even store things in yourself. Okay, well, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.